In this video, we're going to take a look at ionic bonding. So specifically, we're going to look at how an ionic bond forms, as well as some of the properties of ionic compounds. So before we get into what an ionic bond is, we do need a way to represent bonding. And one of the easiest ways is to use a Lewis dot diagram. And so Lewis dot diagrams, they represent just the valence electrons of an atom. And what we do is we use dots around the symbol of the element where the number of dots is going to equal the number of valence electrons. So what we're going to do is take the element symbol, we're going to determine the number of valence electrons, and then we're going to put dots around it. And what we want to do is we want to put one dot on each side of four sides before we start pairing them up. So let's take a look at an example of this and see how this works. So for a chlorine atom, if we take our chlorine atom, our chlorine atom has seven valence electrons because it is in group seven or group 17. So we're going to write our chlorine, then we're going to draw one dot on each side, so that's four, and then we're going to pair up so we go five, six, and seven. So that would be the Lewis dot diagram for a chlorine atom. Very similarly with ions, if we take the magnesium ion, the magnesium normally has two valence electrons, so we got one and two, but with the ion, um, this is going to lose two electrons. So we can erase those two. And with positively charged ions, we just leave it blank. We put the square brackets around and add the charge. If we had a negatively charged ion, like the chlorine atom here, we actually draw in all eight. And this is just convention. So we would draw in all eight square brackets and then a negative sign. So now that we've looked at Lewis dot diagrams, let's talk about ionic compounds. So they are formed between a metal, which is known as a cation, something that loses electrons, along with a nonmetal so, or an anion, and then this is something that gains electrons. The electrons are transferred from the metal to the nonmetal. And once that happens, we create two, pos two ions. One is positively charged, one is negatively charged. And that electrostatic attraction between the two ions is what it, we call an ionic bond. So they are not actually bonded to each other. They are just attracted based on their uh, charges to each other. In a solid state for ionic compounds, um, then we've got these positively charged, negatively charged ions. They actually form crystals. And these crystals, we would say, have a lattice structure. Okay. So we can see on our example here, we've got sodium ions and we've got chlorine ions, and they are all sort of stacked together in this type of lattice structure. They are alternating so that positive charges are with negative charges and vice versa. In terms of properties, ionic compounds are typically hard, they're brittle, they have very, very high melting points. So let's take a closer look at ionic bonding because we've got the formation of ions happening and then the attraction of the two ions coming together. So ionic bonding actually occurs in three steps. The first step is the loss of the electrons by the metal. And if we remember in our previous video, this is also termed as our ionization energy. So in our diagram here, our sodium ion or sorry, our sodium metal has one valence electron, and it is losing that um, electron 
which then in step two, we're gaining electrons by the non-metal. And so that's our electron affinity, if you remember from our other uh, video. So chlorine with seven valence electrons is gaining an electron. Finally, we get that attraction between the positive and negative ions. This is actually termed its bond energy. And we saw bond energies or enthalpies in a separate video as well. Okay, so what we do is we can actually draw diagrams to denote what's happening here as an ionic bond is forming. Let's take the example calcium and fluorine. So calcium, if we draw its Lewis dot diagram, has two valence electrons. If we draw fluorine now, it's got seven valence electrons. And so what we would want to do in our diagram is show what is happening to the electrons. So calcium is losing an electron to the fluorine. But the goal here is to get to noble gas configurations. So while we've gotten to a noble gas configuration for fluorine, calcium still has this one other electron here. So we actually need one more fluorine. We'll draw that in down here. And this other electron then is going to the other fluorine. So that's showing our step one and our step two, our ionization energy and our electron affinity. Then what we wanna do is we wanna just show our overall final state. So we have calcium that's lost two electrons. It is now a two plus charge. And we can show the fluorines a little, a uh, couple of different ways. We could show them separately. So we have one fluorine here with a negative charge. And maybe we put the other one over here just to kind of like stress that we would have alternating negative and positive charges. Or you could also draw it as CA with a two plus. And then we could say we have two fluorines with a negative charge, okay? So a couple ways you can represent that. Now we could also write out equations for what is happening here. So for the ionization energy for calcium, we have calcium, and this is going to require some energy, is going to produce a calcium two plus ion and two electrons. Okay, that's our ionization energy. For fluorine, each fluorine is going to gain an electron, and that's gonna produce an F minus and um, also release some energy. Okay, so this is our electron affinity. Now combining these two together, we do wanna show that we require two of these reactions with the one calcium. So our overall equation would be calcium two plus, plus two fluorine ions is going to produce our ionic compound, calcium fluoride. So what we showed up at the top here, this is called an ionic diagram. And what we showed down here at the bottom, these are called ionic equations. Okay, so that's two ways that we can represent the formation of an ionic bond. So that's it for this video. Let's uh, move on to our next task.